Darwinian evolution. Junk science. Let's actually look at the origin of this Darwinian teaching and judge it on the basis of its fruit, of what it has actually produced. The first thing that you will notice when we look into this is that Darwinian evolution is racist. By racist, we mean a person who believes in racism, the doctrine that one's own racial group is superior, or that a particular racial group is inferior to the others. Now, evolutionists resent anybody actually even bringing this up. They get very angry about it, and they start calling people names just because you even bring this up. And they will say, no, Darwin was not a racist and evolution is not racist. What I would say to them, if they're people of science, why don't they just use their reason? Why don't we just look at the facts? Why don't we look at the history? Why don't we see what the man actually said. And then we will know whether he was a racist or not. In his book, The Origin of Species, it is said that he confines himself to the area of natural life that does not include humans that it's just about the natural world apart from humans. However, however you look at it, this has great implications regarding humans. Now, here is an example of something that you will find in the book. In this book, he writes about something called the slave-making instinct referring to ants that make slaves out of other ants. And he says this, It is far more satisfactory to look at such instincts as ants making slaves, not especially endowed or created instincts, but as small consequences of one general law leading to the advancement of all organic beings, namely, multiply, vary, let the strongest live, and the weakest die. Basically what he is asserting is that within the animal kingdom, making slaves is a natural thing to do. Now does that have implications for men? Is this really just talking about ants, or is it talking about human beings too? Well, we don't have to guess about that because he actually wrote about it in several different letters. And it says, One day in 1858, while out walking, Darwin noticed some large red ants carrying smaller black, what he called slave ants. He says this, I have such a piece of luck at Moore Park. I found the rare slave-making ant and saw the little black N-word in the plural in their master's nest. He goes on. I've had some fun here in watching a slave-making ant. Why would that be fun? For I could not help rather doubting the wonderful stories but I have now seen a marauding party 
And I have seen a migration from one nest to another of the slave makers carrying their slaves. And then he says, who are house and not field and word in the plural. In their mouths. Is he talking about ants? Or is he talking about people? Or is he talking about both? Certainly using this racist term in this way and talking about the slavery of these ants in the same kind of terminology as was common among slavers during his lifetime would indicate he's talking about both. So, what is he really saying? Isn't he saying there's a justification for slavery in the natural world? How could you find any other conclusion but that? Well, that's not the whole extent, in fact, of his racist comments. He said this in another book, The Descent of Man, where he does directly deal with evolution as it applies to human society. He says, at some future period not very distant as measured by centuries, the civilized races of man will almost certainly exterminate and replace the savage races throughout the world. At the same time, the anthropomorphous apes, as Professor Schaffhausen has remarked, will no doubt be exterminated. The break between man and his nearest allies will then be wider, for it will intervene between man and a more civilized state, as we may hope, even than the Caucasian, and some ape as low as a baboon, instead of as now between the Negro or Australian and the gorilla. So in this comment, what he is saying is that presently the Caucasian is at the top of his scale of evolution, and using his words, the Negro or Australian is at the bottom of the scale, the closest to the gorilla. Is that a racist comment? You read the definition of racism. Is that not racist? Isn't that outrageous? How can anybody defend that? According to his claim, we have someone like Martin Luther King, a highly developed sense of morals and intelligence, who he is comparing as being the next thing to an ape. Is that even logical? Let alone, is it even humane? So we find that Darwinian evolution began stating that men are animals with some races more advanced along the evolutionary chain than others. Darwin clearly placed Caucasians at the highest place in that chain while placing those races he generally termed savages at the bottom. Why would he say that? This view was very convenient as a scientific justification for European colonization and enslavement of the native peoples of the world. This is telling you what evolution is really about. It serves the interest of the elite. And you know, even now, it's hard to find pure science because scientists all need funding. So it's the people and the institutions with the money that provide the grants that often determine what the outcome of any scientific inquiry is going to be. There's lots of pseudoscience in the world, even now, and that was true back then. That was true regarding Charles Darwin. Now, what happened with all this? Well, maybe you've seen some of this kind of nonsense. 
scientific racism. It ran rampant after Darwin, speculating on his theory of survival of the fittest. You have these stupid measurements of people's heads and charts showing which is the most advanced on the evolutionary scale and which is the least and grading them in between. If anything, instead of elevating the ones at the top, it just degraded the entire human race, this kind of thinking. And the results were pretty terrible. For example, here's a newspaper article from Australia that is telling some of the history in Australia. The headline is, Black Slain for Science's White Superiority Theory. Cross out white superiority theory and put Darwinism, because it's the same thing. And the article outlines all kinds of horrors that happened in Australia towards the Aboriginal people there. You have a picture of people chained up to one another, and it says, the systematic mistreatment of Aborigines continued well into this century, with many rounded up and chained together like animals. This is the real result of Darwinian evolution in the very century where it began and continuing on at least into the 20th century and actually continuing today. Here's one of the things that it says in the article. Aborigines were murdered to obtain specimens for science and were killed for display. Darwinian evolution, friends. The fruit of Darwinian evolution. Was this video informative? Click the like button below to help spread the word to others. Feel free to leave a comment and share your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss out on more amazing content from Ayahu Ben David.